Um, I know a lot of ranchers that are much different than what mainstream media portrays, and I know that a lot of uh, mainstream media stuff is unfortunately true, and there's a lot of ranchers that just don't want these animals on the landscape, but most of the people that I've met out here and all the people that I work with are very open-minded to that, and they might not love wolves, but they realize that, hey, you know, they're going to stick around, they're here to stay, and I've got to figure out a way to exist with them. So by looking for help, by trying to find a non-lethal methodology and somebody that can actually implement that in the proper way and that has the proper gear and the training to do that and the knowledge and experience behind them to actually see this through produces results and it actually has changed the mentality for a lot of people, I think, because a lot of it is based off of... Uh, social tolerance and i digress a little bit in this uh how range writing works it seems right now but social tolerance is a huge part of how range writing works believe it or not what i'm trying to help do is guide this process away from what i've called in my head and in my notes and diary um a range war The people that live with wolves are, are definitely affected differently than the people that are not living with wolves. And the people that don't live with wolves have a right to want that animal in the landscape. They, I mean, by all means, in every fiber of my being, I think wolves are uh, an integral part of our environment and I think have an intrinsic niche to fill. I mean, we get dogs from these guys, and I love these guys, so, you know, go play. Anyways, uh... So, I mean, it's an important factor to look at both sides of the spectrum, both sides of the coin, and that's a huge factor of this work. So, what I'm trying to do is help increase social tolerance for not only wolves in the landscape, but public land ranching on the landscape. And how we go about doing that the best way is to realize that these two entities are intertwined, they're linked together. I realized that first thing almost. Um, I was like, you know, if I want to save wolves, I'm going to have to help save ranching. And ranching's starting to disappear, folks, and that's something that... I've come to terms with in a different way now working in this environment and working in this capacity with these people and really getting to know them. So, and I realize also if I want to save ranching, wolves have got to be saved. So they're intertwined right now. And that's the point that I'm trying to make is this uh, balance that we're striving for has to happen. And the best tool to do that is this range rating that we're talking about right now and that we're defining in this video for you. So if these people that live on the landscape with these animals and are affected on a daily basis sometimes, continue to feel like they don't have the help um, that I'm trying to offer on a very small scale, and I would love to offer on a larger scale, they will take the path that uh, wolves do, that you and I do, um, and that's the path of least resistance. And that would be going to grab that box of ammo off the shelf and loading their rifle and just taking care of the problem that way. And the problem with that, besides the moral implication that I see, is the fact that you will continue to pe repeat this cycle. It's gonna be a cyclical thing that you just see come up and crop up all the time because if I kill that wolf, I haven't changed any of the variables except for that one animal. And this is a void, this is an environment that's gonna pull in another animal. I mean, it's, uh, it's got enough resources to sustain another wolf. So you're gonna continue that process over and over again. We've seen that continuously in the news and the media. We see it all the time, every year, with how our State Department is currently managing wolves in our state. So my work is to get in there, act as a buffer, not only utilizing range writing, um, education, there's all kinds of things that I'm trying to take um, and, and do and steer this in the right way. Range writing is a very successful thing when done properly, and I know that doesn't seem like that to a lot of people that uh, read the newspaper and, and watch the news when they've seen it in the media. But uh, if you actually apply this in the correct way, and I believe that uh, I found this. I found this way by listening to the community, by listening to the wolves, by uh, just being on the ground and listening to my heart and just being out there constantly. Um, I think I found out that there is a proper way that we can do this. There is a good way to range ride. And when that's done properly, it is a very excellent and very key tool in that toolbox of mine that I was talking about earlier to facilitate a bridge between animals and humans and that's a big part of my work a lot of it does deal with range riding there's house calls though that i deal with there's a lot of things that i do but i just wanted to clarify a little bit on this range riding so please if you feel like uh this is vibing with you if this is something that's really 
kind of not just entertaining, but it's educational, hopefully, too. And it's uh, maybe just a, a point of connection for you. Please remember to hit that like button. Um, please, if you want, subscribe. That'll keep you up to date on when we're putting videos out. Uh, I know the person behind the camera that I'm looking at right now puts a lot of hard work into this. So big shout out, Star. I appreciate you. Love you. But um, it helps us to know that there's a point to do this. So please connect with us on this, continue, and hopefully that helps you. Thank you.